ships, planes, trucks and trains. Every year they are used to take more than 20 million consignments of radioactive material to destinations all over the world. Places where it is urgently needed. For generating power, for diagnostic and therapeutic uses in medicine, in industry, research, manufacturing, agriculture, minerals exploration and in and around our homes. Radioactive material makes our lives easier, better, safer and healthier. The movement of radioactive material has an excellent safety record. That's because of the care taken by those sending the packages, the carriers delivering them, the package recipients and the stringent regulation provided both at the global level by the International Atomic Energy Agency and nationally by member states. This is one of a series of short videos produced by the IAEA about the essential aspects of the safe transport of radioactive material. It's about the different sorts of packaging used to transport radioactive material. The requirements for those packages are principally to protect people, property and the environment from the radiation that they emit. The single most important issue in the transport of radioactive material is safety and the most important means of ensuring safety is through packaging. There are close controls on the requirements that you have to follow to manufacture. Packagings. We call packagings because they don't contain radioactive material. You put radioactive material inside a packaging and it becomes a package. Radioactive material comes in many forms and the danger posed by the radiation it produces varies in the same way. The principle of the IAEA's regulations for packaging design is that the packaging matches the level of danger posed by the particular material. The greater the danger, the stronger the packaging. For this reason, radioactive material is moved using five different types of packaging, designed in accordance with IAEA regulations. Accepted packaging, industrial packaging, type A packaging, type B packaging and type C packaging. Accepted packaging is restricted to contents with such low levels of radiation that the potential hazards are insignificant. A common example might be the postal packaging used to carry medical radiopharmaceuticals. For some, it doesn't matter. For some of those packages contain radioactive material that would eventually be injected into a patient's arm. Therefore, the concern about that package being involved in an accident and releasing its contents are understandably very low. Industrial packaging is used for transporting materials with low specific activity, such as bulk hospital waste, or materials which are not radioactive but have low levels of surface contamination, such as reactor components following decommissioning. Type A packaging is used to transport materials with relatively small but significant quantities of radioactive material. The amount of radionuclides they can contain is strictly limited by the regulations. Typically, Type A packaging is used to transport medical or industrial radioisotopes or some nuclear fuel cycle materials. For radioisotopes and other things that are used perhaps for medical diagnostics and procedures, uh, medical isotopes, those may not need as robust a package as something like spent nuclear fuel, which is highly radioactive. Special kinds of radioactive material, like those with high activities of medical or industrial sources and spent fuel from nuclear power plants, require Type B packaging. Some of the containers are small, others weigh more than 100 tonnes. This cutaway model shows how spent fuel is packed and protected inside a 100 ton Type B caster package. Because of the risk that the materials pose, 
the packages have to be capable of withstanding major accidents. The regulations require that they are produced to very high engineering standards. The Type B package has a set of requirements in order to test to make sure these packages are accident resistant. That includes a severe impact test, a fire test, a submersion test underwater, and other various tests to make sure that these packages do not leak in accordance with the regulations. This film from the archives shows the early testing of a Type B package during the development of the Type C packaging regulations. Introduced in 1996, these address the requirement for additional engineering and safety factors, enabling a Type C package to withstand a severe aircraft accident. And whatever the packaging and whatever the material, associated regulations ensure the safety of cargo handlers, the environment and the public as packages are transported around the world. So there are close controls on its manufacture, how you maintain it, how you look after it, how you handle it, indeed how you fill it and seal it. From then on, how you put it on a vehicle, or on an aircraft, or on a ship. And sooner or later, this radioactive material will be put to good use. To find out more about the safe transport of radioactive material, visit our website at goto.iaea.org forward slash transport safety. It's also worth looking at the nine companion films in this series. Together, they're a great introduction to the hows, whys and wherefores of the transport of these vital goods. Music